like that today's thumbnail kind of says it all. This video is about layering indeed, but probably not what you think it's about. Because I'm not talking about the process of adding layers of paint, building them up in order to make some kind of transition or work up. That, at this point, has kind of been done to death in terms of YouTube. Instead, I want to talk about two different types of layering methodologies and the outputs that you can get from those. They're known as chronological layering and permanence layering. Okay, so before you switch off and get really mad at me and think that I'm a pretentious idiot, I know they have very silly names, but bear with me. We're going to start with chronological layering first. So let's just take a quick look-see at these crates and terminals that I've had sat around on my desk for far too long, waiting for me to get painted up for use with Stargrade. We'll begin with the crates, which I want to paint up as kind of abandoned military storage crates, you know, with some chips and some weathering and probably some dusty sort of effects on them, that kind of thing. Now, of course, I know how to do all of those things, but the order in which I apply them actually really matters. So once upon a time, our little crates here, you know, they probably would have been painted in, let's say, a military green. And around that same sort of time, they probably would have had markings painted onto them, you know, this way up arrows or a brand name or whatever. So I'm going to begin by getting all of that painted onto the miniature itself so that I can get an idea of what these looked like when they were new off the line. So, you know, a nice military green bit of paint. I'll do some dry brushing over the top in a paler colour just to, you know, bring out some, some texture on the surface of the miniature. A quick bit of metallic for some fixings and fittings, some white for the freehand. Easy. And, and now we've got a good idea of what that crate looked like when it was brand new, when it was a thing that was just made and just released into the world. So this is the deepest chronological layer. It's the furthest back in its history. So for the next step, we now need to think about what happened next in the life of this item. So we said it was an abandoned crate. That implies that it went through a life of work and then eventually stopped being used and was left by the wayside. So it's safe to assume that it probably picked up some bangs, some scratches, that kind of thing. And that's going to be our next chronological layer. It's very easy to simulate this on the surface of the miniature because we just need to use more of our same metallic paint. Some sort of steel colour in this case. I, I think I used Vallejo Dark Aluminium, unsurprisingly. Now obviously there are several schools of thought on how to apply sort of dings and chips and scratches and stuff like that. Some people prefer a sponge, some people prefer a brush. I'm personally in camp brush because it allows me to kind of seamlessly switch between painting little fine scratches and doing kind of stipples and jaggedy chips and stuff like that. So I prefer the versatility of a brush. The sponge is a bit monotask. Okay, so as I say, that's the second deepest chronological layer and we're now done with that. So what comes next? Okay, so if we think about the life of our crate, we've done it being made, then we've done its kind of working life, being used and abused. So we've now reached the point where it's been abandoned. So what happens once it's been abandoned? It stops being moved around regularly. It stops being, you know, wiped down, maintained, anything like that. And this is where dirt will start to build up in the recesses. This is where rust will start to occur, perhaps. This is where, you know, dustiness might start to build up on the surface, that kind of thing. So it's kind of the over effect. And these are our newest chronological layer. These are the most recent things in the history of the item. So you may have noticed that I didn't shade any of those metallics when we started painting those, and that is because I was waiting for this stage where I knew I was going to start putting dirt into the recesses. I'm just going to use a, a brown paint here, and I'm going to thin it right down and, and paint dirt into the recesses, and that will act also as the kind of overall shading for the piece as well as simulating that dirt. So that's why we kind of didn't need to do that previously. Um, I'll also streak in some rust here with a bright orange, you know, being a bit more sparing, not really not really going too ham with it. And then finally, to top everything off, I'm going to grab an ochre-coloured weathering powder and just sort of stab that around the base of it. The idea here, I'm sort of thinking that it's been maybe left in the desert or, or somewhere sandy or somewhere dusty, and, you know, the, the sort of natural kick-up of, of dirt and dust and particles has started to stick to it and do a bit of a number on it, make it a bit dusty and dirty. And so that's it. That's the crates finished. And you'd be forgiven for thinking that that is all there is to learn on the subject. But I did say that there were two types of layering techniques that I wanted to discuss here, and that's chronological and permanence. 
And these are two different methods of thinking to produce different effects, but they're really handy things to get into your head to give you sort of a, a, an order of operations for when you work on stuff like this. So let's talk about permanence layering. Okay, so you'll remember those terminals that we had previously. Uh, I've already applied some of those chronological layering techniques to the rest of the terminal, but I've left the screens blank here, you'll notice, and that's because that's where we're gonna do our permanence layering. So we've got something pretty much ready to go here, and we just need to make a start with that one part. So first of all, we'll start with the most permanent thing, which is just the ambient green glow of the screens. You know, when they're turned on, I want them to be emitting some green kind of cathode ray light. Um, yes, I'm stuck in the 80s. Yes, I'm proud of it. And yes, I was thinking of Commodore computers when I designed how I wanted these to look. Okay, so with the most permanent layer down, now we need to think about the next most permanent layer. So what is that? Well, that's gonna be the things that are being displayed currently on the screens. So whether that be text or images or whatever, it, it's it's gonna involve some freehanding in this case, so I can kind of just put whatever I want on them. And so I put whatever I wanted on them. And then the most temporary layer, the most in the moment layer, the, the layer that, you know, could be gone in a heartbeat. And my idea for that was to just put a little white reflection at the corner of each screen. You know, you could change the angle you're viewing it at and that reflection would disappear. So this is probably the least permanent part. But it made sense for the look that I was going for and it's an easy way to get that third layer in there so that everything's looking cohesive. And so it's a very similar principle as you can understand, but that is the basics of permanence layering. And using both chronological layering and permanence layering, we can then get this really cool set of objective markers, which means not only did I get to make content this week, but I also finally got to do something for myself that I've been needing to do for bloody months. Okay, and so now that you are armed with both of those brand new methodologies, get yourselves out into the big wide world and have a think about what you might want to paint using them. I'd be very interested if this has inspired you or if there are any particular items that you've got coming up that you want to paint that you think these techniques will work well for. So get at me in the comments and let me know if that's the case. And until the next time, folks, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe as always. And please do check out the links in the description of the video if you wish to support the content, because there's a bunch of really easy ways that you can do that down there, and some of those don't even cost you anything extra to do. And with all that said, I'd like to wish you happy hobbying, folks, and thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one, so bye-bye for now.